Now we are ready to collaborate with the rest of the team by pushing to a shared repository. I'll start by showing you how to create a team project that uses Git as source control and then we'll push changes to it. From Team Explorer, I'm going to select Projects and My Teams and select New Team Project. That brings up a familiar wizard which is used to create either a TFS team project with TFS version control or one with Git version control. I start with a team project name. The next thing I do is select which process template I want to use for my team project. In this case, I'm selecting the Microsoft Visual Studio Scrum 3.0 template. I am then asked if I want to use a SharePoint site or not. In our case, we're not going to use SharePoint. And then I get to the step where we get to choose between Team Foundation version control or Git. By default, we get Team Foundation version control. And all I have to do is select Git from the dropdown. Then I click on Next. I get a summary of all the settings that I've selected and finish. This process takes a couple of minutes, depending on how performant your server is. So behind the scenes, Team Foundation Server just created your source control repository, plus it used the template that we selected, in our case the Scrum template, to create a way for us to track work items which includes such things as tasks, bugs, user stories, and others. Now that we're ready, we can click on close, and now I have a repository. The Git repository that is created by TFS is a standard Git repository, so you can access it using any Git client. I have two options here. I can either clone the empty repository to my machine, or I can push an existing local repository to the server. Clicking on the web portal link will bring up the TFS web portal. And clicking on the code link on an empty repository shows me instructions on how to get started. As you can see, I can either perform these operations from Visual Studio or from command line. I'm going to select the URL to my Git repository, copy that to my clipboard. Now going back to Visual Studio, I'm going to open up my existing local repository. Now from Visual Studio, after I open my existing local repository, I can go to unsync commits, enter the URL for my empty git repo and publish. This is publishing my local master branch to my TFS repository. Once that's done, I can bring up the TFS web portal again and refreshing this page. This shows you all the changes that were in my master branch locally are now in my TFS server. All the files along with the latest commit comments are shown on, the, on this page and clicking on history I can see all the commits that I did locally. I have not pushed any of my branches yet so my branches drop down shows up empty. I'm switching back to Visual Studio so that I can push one of the branches. This shows me the, the list of all the branches that have been published and the ones I haven't yet. I'm going to select feature 1.1, right click on it and publish branch. This is getting all my changes up to the server. So let me switch back to my web portal again, refresh my page, and I can switch between my master branch and my feature 1.1 branch. As you can see, this shows you the changes that were committed only to the feature 1.1 branch. And look at history, this shows you the 1.1 changes. Let me switch back and forth between the feature 1.1 and the master branch. So you can see 
how my history is different. That's master and that's feature 1.1. The other thing that you can do with Git hosted in TFS is have multiple repos as part of the same team project. If I were to have another repo in TFS, I would see it here. You can click on Manage Repositories. And I can create a new repository. So just like I did with my first repository, I could push changes to the second repository. Now that we're on this page, you can see that we can manage permissions per repository. These permissions include such things as branch creation in the shared repository. Also clicking on the options link gives me additional options about my repositories, such as showing my gravatar images, which is done by default. 